Efficiency equals profit, baby. You already figured it out. Now don't blow it up. Just keep squeezing profit out of those efficient processes that you've created. Welcome, everybody, to The Chris Harder Show, where we are making you unapologetic about your pursuit of success, knowing that when good people like you make good money, they can then do great things. My name is Chris Harder, and several times per week, I will bring you epic guests, solo episodes, and every single tool, trick, and skill set you need to grow your business, grow your money mindset, and to grow your wealth to levels that you have never reached before. I've ended up in a unique place in life where I've got the experience, the connections, and all of the secrets that it takes to be successful. And I'm lifting the curtain to reveal it all to you in an effort to help put you in a position of abundance so great that you can then be as generous as possible. So let's lock arms and let's get started. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to The Chris Harder Show, where we absolutely believe that both prosperity and generosity can and must coexist. Today, we're going to talk about the monotony trap. The monotony trap. What in the world is the monotony trap? Well, some of you are probably there right now and you don't realize it. Some of you are there and you absolutely realize it, but it's a point in your business that all of us will reach at some point. See, monotony kills, but at the same time, monotony is the lifeblood of your business. And so it can it can frustrate you and it can bore you to death as much as it can absolutely increase your bottom line. And the truth is you cannot have a long-term, successful, thriving business without embracing some of the monotony. But just because it's there, just because you have to do the basic things over and over and over and over again, even long after you become kind of bored doing them, doesn't mean you have to be miserable in doing this. And that's what we're going to address. So let me kind of start with a metaphor. You see, your business, you love your business, right? So therefore, your business is like a great long-term relationship. In other words, in the beginning, it was hot and exciting and, and new, and you just couldn't wait to do all the things. And then, with enough time, all of a sudden, it became, well, repetitive and monotonous and even less exciting. And you realized oh crap, I got to put in work in order to keep this relationship exciting. Otherwise, it fizzles out. There's a great TED Talk out there on this, actually. If any of you have ever seen the TED Talk by Esther Perel, she is one of the most amazing leading experts when it comes to relationships. And in Esther's um, TED Talk, she says the following about relationships. She says, the very thing that feeds A thriving and secure relationship is the exact same thing that kills a fiery, passionate one. And that is repetition, familiarity, routine, trust, security, etc. All the things that make something brand new and exciting and thrilling at first, those are the things that actually hurt long-term relationships, and all the things that actually help long-term relationships, they build trust, they build security, they, they, they make you feel safe, are the things that actually kill some of the fiery passion. And so is the punchline that you have to live with one or the other and you can't have both? No, absolutely not. The punchline is, just like in your business, you have to find a way to have both because you can have it all. You see, your business is the same as relationships. It's the same as when Esther Perel talks about this great polarity between new excitingness and long-term security. At first, when you started your business, you were so excited about the fun stuff. You couldn't wait to create your brand. You couldn't wait to create new products. You couldn't wait to, to land your first clients, to make your first sale, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But then, with repetition, it all became old hat. As a matter of fact, the law of diminishing returns kicked in somewhere in your business. Now, if you haven't heard me teach before what the law of diminishing returns is, it's simply this. With repeated exposure, things lose their significance. In other words, if I had to use a food metaphor, 
If you love cheeseburgers, and for my vegans out there, if you love like Beyond Meat burgers, just hang in there with me. The first cheeseburger, it's amazing. Like best thing you've ever tasted. So you go in for a second. Second cheeseburger, still really damn good, but you're getting full. Third cheeseburger, now you're just eating because it tastes good. And honestly, you're starting to get a little bit uncomfortable. Fourth cheeseburger, now it's getting a little bit gross. And the fifth cheeseburger, now you got the meat sweats or the beyond meat sweats. And nobody likes the meat sweats. Now, is it the cheeseburger's fault? Did the cheeseburger change? No. What changed was the repeated exposure to the same damn burger over and over and over again until it was literally disgusting to you. You cannot let your business fall victim to law of diminishing returns. Now, here's the crux of it all. The things that make your business absolutely successful long-term are the small, monotonous things done over and over and over again. The small things that you repeat, and because you've done them for so long, so often, you've become incredibly good at them. You've mastered them but they've lost their excitement. Remember how thrilling, even scary the first sales call can be? Now you can do it in your sleep. Now you know exactly what they're going to say to you and exactly what you're going to say back to them. But you've become good at it. And that's why your business is going well. You've just kind of lost the excitement. And this is where I see people sabotage their business. I see this all the time. They finally get their program up and running. People are actually starting to ask, hey, when's the next one opening? It's getting a reputation. Everyone's excited for it. It went from like barely being able to sell your first program to now you know this thing is pre-sold five months before they're even able to enroll. Except, what do you do? You blow it up and you start something new. Not because the program isn't printing money and changing lives, but because you got bored of it. And it's not a judgment. It happens to everybody. This used to happen to my wife all the time. When she was in fitness, we had the greatest monthly membership. 2,000 women paying $60 a month every single month, 120 grand a month, very little overhead. It only took her a few hours to, to, to write the workouts and to film it. Except she did it for so long, so often, that it became monotonous and boring to her. And so then she got into to self-development, and and she had the Bliss Project, and and year after year, 500 women from eight or nine different countries would come, and she'd change lives. But then, with repeated exposure, it came time to end that and move into something else. This is human nature, guys, except the problem is some of you are killing incredible income sources that you once prayed for just because you got bored. And so you don't have to throw the baby out with the the bathwater. You don't have to sabotage your business. Here's another example. When we were actively growing our network marketing team, we were one of the fastest growing teams in the history of the company, if not the fastest growing team. And one of the things that I quickly learned as I was growing this team was that to create a successful network marketing team, it wasn't always what worked that made it a team successful. It was what was easily repeatable that worked long-term to build a good team. In other words, when when we were first in network marketing, we were sharing uh, healthy supplements. And it was so simple because my wife had, had just won all of these fitness competitions and she was getting covers of magazines. And we quickly realized that we could just put her on the phone with somebody else. They'd say, what do you use? She'd say, I use X, Y, and Z. And they would sign up. Except when it came to getting other people on our team who also wanted to share the products and make some money to do the same, they would say, well, I'm not a world fitness champion. I'm not on the cover of magazines. I don't have 20 pack abs, so I can't share this. You see, that's a good example of it's not what works all the time. It's what's duplicable. It's what can be easily repeated by everybody that works. And those are the monotonous things. The truth is, when I got into coaching our network marketing team, and when I got into dumbing it down so we could have simple conversations to sign people up, the absolute truth is this. We got sick and tired of having the same old conversations over and over and over and over again for years. It became 
deathly monotonous. But it's what worked because people could duplicate it because we kept it simple. What is simple and what gets repeated in any business is always what works. So the same goes for your business. If your team can't scale what you've already mastered, well, then you're going to be a one-person show and you're going to, you're going to hit a ceiling and then you're going to get bored and you're going to get frustrated. If your team cannot quickly duplicate what it is that you used to make your business successful, then your business is, is, is no longer going to grow. You need to keep it simple and keep it duplicatable in case a new teammate comes in so that they can pick up the, the standard operating procedures and just start doing what you've already figured out works. That is the life, lifeblood of a business. Duplication. Small, simple things done over and over and over again. So you've actually got to learn to appreciate them and embrace them. So here's three tips to help you do that. If you find that you're bored, if you, if you suspect you're going to get bored in your business soon, here's three tips to be able to get that thrill back again, to be able to, to keep it going even though it feels monotonous to you. Number one, embrace what monotony does for your bottom line. Efficiency equals profit, baby. You already figured it out. Now don't blow it up. Just keep squeezing profit out of those efficient processes that you've created and appreciate, enjoy that you are now profitable for less effort. You are now profitable for less fear. Yeah, the fear might give you the thrill, the dopamine hit, the rush, but now get that rush, get that thrill off the profit that you worked so hard to get to that point. It's number one, embrace what monotony does for your bottom line. Number two, spice it up again. Maybe you go work in new places. Instead of working in your home day in and day out by yourself, go work at, at a WeWork. Go work at a, a shared workspace. Go work at a, a collaborative space. Go work in your local coffee shop. Go work in new places. Go learn new things. Yeah, your business is doing well, but you know what? There's more you could learn. Throw yourself intentionally into learning new things, new tricks, things that'll boost your business. Maybe make that first hire that you're afraid to make. Bring some new people into your business. They'll offer you new perspective, new life. Now you have somebody to show up for other than yourself, and that's exciting. Your job is to find the fun again and to intentionally spice it up by doing these things. And number three, move your finish line. Move your finish line. What I mean by that is expect more out of yourself once again. It was exciting chasing your first six figures. But now you're just going through the monotony, you know, making your hundred, hundred and fifty, two hundred thousand dollars a year. Well, guess what? Become excited now about chasing a quarter million. And then when you hit a quarter million, don't get stuck. Become excited again. Move your finish line. Get excited about making a half million and then a million and so on. Move your finish line. That's number three. These, this is what you must do in order to embrace what the monotony does for you instead of accidentally blow up and sabotage your business just because you're bored. Because I see way too many people do that way too many times. This is what you worked so hard to create. This is where you worked so hard to get. Enjoy it. Find the perks. Find the blessings. And challenge yourself to find the excitement in it again. Because when good people like you embrace monotonous things, that's when they make good money and can do great things. They'll twist on my normal line there at the end. And by the way, don't forget about my new faster mind. We are definitely going to spice things up and bring the excitement back to your business there, I swear, because we're going to put you in a tiny group in my house in an intimate setting for a couple days in a row while we roll up our sleeves, collaborate, teach you brand new things, and change your life. We're going to bridge that gap between where you're bored at right now and where you are praying you will be one day. We are going to do that in a much faster condensed container than anyone else has ever done that before. It's going to change your life. Now, we're quickly filling up the first one. I've decided to do a second one. So I want you to text me the word FASTER to 310-421-0416. Again, text me the word FASTER to 310-421-0416. We'll banter back and forth, see if you're a good fit for one of these groups, and then we'll give you an official invitation. Text me the word FASTER to 310-421-0416. And in the meantime, don't get bored. Go spice it up and enjoy what monotony has done for your business. Thanks for listening. 
Thanks for listening. And if you loved this episode and know of someone else who is as successful as they are generous, please pass them on to me. It would mean the world to me if you help me get this cause and this message out to as many listeners as I can. So please, if you liked what you heard, it goes a long way if you take 30 seconds and leave me a five-star review and share this with your friends. I'll be forever grateful. And until the next episode, cheers to your success.